Okay, we're just looking at a KR400. These are an old, dependable, you know, often a few screws that have seen better days uh, rotator. And um, but uh, I've got to be honest, pretty reliable. Hang on, let me just turn down my um, YouTube over here. Hang on. The um, bad news that um, Jordan three US lives lost, um, military lives lost with. Um, uh, the Iranian strike on the, the base here, so um, that is going to get more than interesting. Anyway, oh, let's get back to this. Um, KR400, they're a six wire connection, so they're pretty easy. I've just thrown a bit of trailer cable on this one. Um, I've actually got a mate, this may or may not be what he's after, uh, but I thought we just need to hook it up. And some of these rotators I've got sitting around. We've got a lot of really heavy duty rotators. I don't have a lot of sort of what you call medium heavy, uh, sorry, medium duty rotators like this. Uh, but, you know, um, these old girls, they're all right. Um, as I said, you know, six wire, quick connection, you know, quickly throw some wires on it just to see. And yeah, we've got meter indicator coming up. Could use a globe in there. Uh, and um, there we go. And what we want to test is uh, whether that meter keeps, um, keeps doing what it's got to do. Sounds actually not too bad. Often um, you get a really bad bearing noise that um, will sort of indicate that. Yeah, there you go. So on the stop mark there. Whoops. Works better if I go over there. And, um, and what you want to test for is, is really any noises. Um, you know, you can re never really 100% know without you know pulling the rotator down. Um, you know, look, I'd always suggest. Uh, Re-greasing, uh, which is not that hard, is, is not such a bad idea. Um, just to uh, make sure that you know, the bearings are still doing okay. This one's sounding very good. Um, no difference. So sort of listening to a new one, to be honest, it's, uh, that means nothing though, because um, um, you can get a bearing that um, all of a sudden. This is why we test it like this here, and just listen for it rotating. Overall, no, I think um, she's a good one. But these are good for, I mean, a lot of people used to use these for, say, your, um, uh, you know, 10 meter beam, etc., tri band beam, even, you know, they were light enough to, to go on them. Um, the boys are looking at using this in a uh, possibly a, a D expedition where it'll just be used for um, uh, 6, 2, and 70 from memory. Uh, so, you know, this doesn't have to do, you know, humongous weight. Um, that being said, you know, some of the things that you know you often do with um, rotators that have been sitting around for a long time, uh, these bolts are cheap, you know, sort of, um, actually they're, they're all moving quite well. Um, yeah, they're not actually, yeah, jeez, actually, no, that one's a little bit, yeah. Often, you know, you'll just renew a few bolts on them just to uh, make them look a little bit prettier and it uh, can't hurt. Although, you know, surprise actually, just, you know, that's spinning, spinning no problem, so, yeah, anyway. But yeah, so that's the KR400. It's a sort of um, a, a, a rotator you can still get the bearings for you can still get most uh, parts all the brackets that are pretty easy to get this one's got top and bottom brackets which is you know very handy especially if you're going to be doing a um, uh, you know a temporary setup um, look how fast actually that's the other thing too you'll notice um, that um, the spin speed of them tells you a lot about how the motor's going on it etc etc and this is this is really working well Actually not too bad at all but um yeah so this is you know one of the rotators that um i would say you know for a few hundred dollars can can really be quite a a great little rotator to get yourself out of trouble and um uh you know when i start showing you some of the um the other bigger ones when we start playing around with some of the pro systems and um uh, even the ultra beam uh, even though they're not available anymore we've got stock of them um uh you know obviously that's just what we swing our big opti beams with and etc uh, etc et but you know we'll might have a look at some of the we've got um, some of the Yesu KR uh, Yesu sorry not KR series um, oh, what did Yesu call theirs uh, G series sorry um, G800s G1000s we've got in stock here and I think I've got a 1200 uh, DX DXX or something like that were called and I've also got one of the 2800 dual brand new um, azimuth um, elevations which I don't know whether we'll end up using here or not but uh, anyway but yeah, that's, um, they're a really simple box. Um, and the good thing about simple, I'm repairing a box I blew up at the moment. Uh, one of the, um, 
Green Herons, which the guys from Green Heron have been fantastic. Circuits, advice, uh, I just need to get back into that because they've given me, if I can't fix it from here, it really means one of the, the programmable chips is in trouble because they've given me every bit of advice. I want to really point that out too. Green Heron, I mean, they're under no obligation. We bought these from uh, Ultra Beam. Now, Ultra Beam were being supplied by um, Green Heron at the time, but, you know, we're not really their direct customer. But when I got onto Green Heron, because Ultra Beam didn't want to even have a... They didn't care. They were like, no. Because, <laughs> of course, it's all been taken over by uh, Wymo and that now, so it's all changed. And there was no question that... Um, I wasn't going to get any help there, but the boys at Green Heron, absolutely just fantastic. So um, um, we'll probably get that up and running very soon. Anyway, this is not a long video. This is just a quick sort of look at this. And um, nice to see that uh, this old girl still working quite well. Actually, the other thing too, have a look at his physical condition. Have a look at whether or not, you know, there's it's been dropped at any stage, any cracks in the casing, those sort of things. Um, uh, you know, because once you get um, any sort of um, ability for uh, rain, any sort of liquid to get in there you're in trouble they um, they won't uh, they won't like that uh, very much at all and on the boxes um, really just look for the indicator it tells you that everything here from the operation side of it is um, um, is presenting a resistance through that tells this to um, obviously indicate the uh, correct linear uh, output and um, just running it one more time just through to south but yeah it's um, they, they were pretty bulletproof these things and I think that's what people liked about them. Um, and look, the Yaesu design, Ken Pro and Yaesu, uh, some <laughs> some would say some of the models, you've really got to look very hard, you know, to uh, to see what the difference is. But uh, yeah, um, no question about that. And actually, I'm just noticing, um, and you'll see this, have a look at this. There's a slight crack in that bracket there. Now, it hasn't gone all the way through, but, you know, um, uh, this is some of the stuff with these alloy parts that, you know, can happen. Um, and so there's a little bit of movement there. Um, would it stop you using this bracket? Well, on a portable situation, probably not. Um, but if we put another bracket, you know, certainly we'd um, replace that. Um, but and this was that was the thing with these alloy cases and alloy brackets. Um, not always, um, not always, you know, sort of. Well, they they kept the weight down on the rotator, and obviously that's why they used them. But um, certainly uh, still something to consider. And that should hit the stop, and it hit the stop. Fantastic. All right. Well, with that. I'm pretty happy that uh, this rotator's done a few rotations and uh, I think it'll do a few more, which, you know, sort of, um, by the way, I'm just out in the American barn. Oh, have a look at the water on the floor. I was filling up my, one of my air conditioners has um, a stop valve on it. This is obviously the one that doesn't. I walk away from this thing. I come back to a flood in the uh, radio shack, radio um, area, sorry, in the, in the American barn. Anyway, it wasn't too bad. It all just dried out pretty quick. Pretty, pretty warm day here, so, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> just telling you how the stupid things I do, I tell you. Um, we're going to put a stop valve on this one because, yeah, it's the second time I've done that, and luckily we never had any problems. But uh, um, concrete gets a wash though, so you know. All right, just let that go through to south one more time, but I think we are finished. I think that's going to prove itself to be quite good. And uh, I'll get on to my mate, see if it's going to do a little job for them. If it is, we've got to pack it in a box and send it over. Um, uh, and uh, as I said, there you go, on the stop. Plenty of other rotators we've got to get through, loads actually, but as I said, a lot of our big heavy duty stuff, so um, uh, we don't, I think this is the last of the sort of medium duties that we'll have. Um, oh, except for we've got some medium duty, very, look, they're expensive. Um, some of the diewas, um, they, they really, uh, they've become almost collector items. Um, uh, one with a nice little controller box, I'll, I'll dig them out later. Anyway, KR400, bit of a, a fixture in people's minds from the 80s, 90s, <laughs> that's for sure. All the best, cheers.